start with this. It says, Hurricane Katrina 2005, never has there been such a volunteer effort than was shown after Hurricane Katrina on August 29, 2005. We thank all who came to our aid and gave us hope and help after the devastation of this storm. May God bless. Then we have another one signed over here. It says, from the people of Waveland, appreciation and gratitude to all who gave their time, energy, and money to help us recover from Hurricane Camille on August 17, 1969. Our city was devastated, but those who cared came to her rescue. And this is Waveland's Ground Zero. pictures are. Okay, this is Friday, August 26. In the early afternoon, the National Hurricane Center officially shifts the possible track of Katrina from the Florida Panhandle to the Mississippi Louisiana coast. The storm strengthens in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico following the declaration of a state of emergency. Federal troops are deployed to coordinate operations with the Federal Emergency Management. Photos by Manessa. And on Saturday, August 27th, uh, Hurricane Katrina reaches Category 3 intensity. The storm tracks continue to show a potential Mississippi landfall. People being bought in up houses and public buildings. Essential employees are called into work preparing for the storm. County workers begin filling sandbags and loading them into the cars. Truckloads of sand and empty bags are stationed at public facilities for all people to fill their homes. On Sunday, August 28th, 
Because Trina becomes a Category 5 storm, the National Weather Service issues a bulletin calling the storm potentially catastrophic and predicting devastating damage. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 85 miles from the center. Families pack their belongings in clothes for a fluctuation of a few days. People are told to bring their important personal possessions, birth certificates, passports, and other documents, bank statements, utility bills, valuables. Cars are packed to the hilt. See, hotels are completely sold out just from just north of the interstate 10 to Jackson and beyond. People with pets face a dilemma as many hotels do not accept pets or quite large cleaning deposits. A few shelters are open for people with nowhere else to go. This is Hurricane Katrina, 28 August 2005. Here's uh, Monday, August 29th. Hurricane makes its second landfall toward the north at 15 miles per hour. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 230 miles from the center. Uh, Hurricane Katrina makes landfall as a strong carrier three hurricane in Mississippi with substantial winds of more than 125 miles an hour. Um, coastal storm surge over 30 feet above sea level. His wavelength the surge particularly high due to the high tide. And I'm not going to read all of it because I can't see it. I just can't see it. And on Monday, August 29th, this continues. So these people who remained in their houses thought they were safe. If the house had survived Hurricane Camille in 1969, however, Hurricane Katrina had much higher storm surge. It is later said that Camille claimed her last victim in 2005 because no one expected that a storm could be more devastating than Camille. Many people crawled to the highest point in the house, the attic, and crouched there for hours while the water swirled below. In the hour of the storm, some people attempt to shift locations or check on family members' vehicles stalled in the high waters, and people are trapped. Rescue operations begin, and one of the first stops is Waveland Police Department, where occupants swim to safety, taking shelter at the height of the storm on the roof for several hours. <laughs> okay, this is Tuesday, August the 30th, the last National Hurricane Center ever to. Advisory describes the remnants of Katrina as moving north at 21,000 hours. Uh, in a way, 80% of all dwellings are uninhabitable. 80% of New Orleans remains underwater at depths of up to 20 feet. Then on Wednesday, August 31st, the National Guard and the U.S. Army of Engineers begin clearing debris from the streets so that the emergency services can get through. There are no supplies of water, ice, and food in Hancock County, and very limited supplies elsewhere on the coast. September the 1st, evacuation of the Superdome begins in New Orleans. There are 708,000 people in shelters across four states. In New Orleans, U.S. Army Corps and New helicopters began dropping sandbags and driving sheets paddling the 17th Street and Cunningham Beaches. Fuel supplies trickle in, but gas line is reserved for official business only. Doesn't matter since there are very few working vehicles. People get around on foot or on bicycle if they can. If they can't get them rolling, the hurricane has swept 95% of the daily Gulf Coast from Mexico. And the storm went through, they turned it into all male, I guess as the town grew. Mm -hmm. And they said the girls somewhere This is after food tents are set up in the parks and parking lots. Stepped by volunteers serving food, donated by churches, nonprofits, communities, and individuals across the country. 
country. They serve everyone from cleaned up workers to bank presidents along with the food. They provide words of encouragement, a place to connect with neighbors, entertainment, and supplies. Says Old Waveland School. The Waveland School was built uh, 1927 and housed students from kindergarten through the eighth grade. This tutor revival style building served as the city's principal school from 1930 until 1972 when a new school was built on in 1976 as a public library and cultural center. The school, which was heavily damaged by Hurricane Katrina in 2005, is the only Waveland historic building to survive and reopen in 2009 as a community center. President Clinton, President Bush. The sand thousands came to help first responders, the military church groups and volunteers from all over the country came to help. And this is Waveland's Fire Department. Says so the city of Waveland was devastated by Hurricane Katrina. Buildings that had survived generations was leveled. Those that were not level was flooded. Ninety-five percent of the city's buildings were impacted. You are standing in the only public building remaining, the old Waveland School Civic and Cultural Center. Say the streets were no longer recognizable. Coburn Avenue, once the old downtown district with 29 active businesses, was leveled by Katrina's wind and water. Residential neighborhoods south of the railroad tracks were turned into splinter and rubble. North of the tracks, nearly all homes were flooded. Let's go on this side and see. This one says, let's start at the end down here. Carousel assembled by Fire Chief Mike Smith in the Waveland Fire Department. This is a piece of the original ceiling tower from the auditorium. And that was before what the building looked like. And this was after. Here was the businesses that was on Cove, on uh, Coleman Avenue. So how could you obey to see the names? And that was Waveland's Fire Department. This is called a mosaic room.
those railroad tracks. All that was left was a piano. This is Waveland's railroad tracks. And this is Bay St. Louis Beach Boulevard. This was a bus business and home. This is Merchants Bank Bay St. Louis. As you can see the water is down here by the beach. Flag. Before and after pictures. This is this quilt. Quilt made by volunteers and benefactors of Old St. Pat's Catholic Church, Chicago, Illinois, for St. Clair Catholic Church, long term recovery. So the quilts that are displayed in the museum were made by this lady right here, Sabine Wells, and she was a master quilter. And when she came back to find her place, not much was left. She collected fabrics that were hers and other people's and clothing. And she made all of these quilts that are displayed in the museum in 18 months. And my personal opinion is that was her therapy session. <laughs> but there's, there's a story about each quilt. So each quilt represented something to her. Like, for example, the quilt with the hearts on it that are kind of broken up, up there in the corner. Okay. That, that showed the broken hearts of the people that came back and had lost all their things. Okay. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Thank you. These two quilts are constructed from shirts donated by our volunteers. They represent all ages, vacation, and faiths. Without our volunteers, this city could not have recovered. We thank them with this permanent installment. In the blue line you see going around. That's how high the water was in here. What you to? Uh, it's uh, Kevin and Marilyn Travels. Okay, Kevin. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay. And Marilyn Travels. Okay. Mm 
Mm-hmm. We appreciate you doing that. Uh, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so glad you came in. Mm-hmm. So when are you going home? Uh, not until April. Oh, you'll be around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. You should. You should end with this one right here. And you should be saying, if you see something like this coming, oh, leave. let me. Right, let me go. <laughs> <laughs> so what's so important about this museum is it gives people an understanding of what can happen in a bad hurricane like this, and it it, it gives them an idea of what they need to prepare for, because. If you don't prepare and leave, you could not survive. And a lot of people did not survive because they stayed. Because the worst storm they'd ever had here was in 1969, Hurricane Camille. And it was when it wasn't water. Okay. So they stayed and they thought they could survive and they didn't. Do you know how many people died? I don't. You don't? Oh, okay. Uh, because it's such a broad area. Oh, the storm okay. It's such a broad area. Okay. There was about 21, 22 people that died here right in Wayland. Oh, okay. But there were okay. people all up and down the coast that died. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, now pay me. No. <laughs> really nice here. If you're ever in this area, I would say just stop by and come in. And Yesterday we came, but they was closed because of the uh, Mardi Gras parade. And so I called this time before we came and they was open. So I hope you will enjoy this video.